But at the end of the day, it was a moment that I took an award, not for just myself or my team or my sponsors, but I took it for the fans that supported drag racing. And I took it for NHRA drag racing. It was something that nobody, only in NASCAR and IndyCar and F1 and others had won that award, but nobody in drag racing had. Well, when John won the Driver of the Year Award in 1996, it was a huge moment for the NHRA and for John. Uh, no drag racing driver had ever won that award, and that's the most prestigious driver award. It's voted on by a national panel of motorsports journalists, and for John to win that after his 96 season, which was such a dominant season, really put him even more on the map, but also elevated the NHRA and the national media's perspective and that drag racing really was on the same level as NASCAR and IndyCar and Formula One. And John had dominated so much that year that the sports writers that voted on it could not overlook the fact of what a great season he had had. I think it was a lot of things that contributed to the success of 96. Um, it, you know, this is a team sport. We had a great team. We worked well together. But uh, I'll be honest, uh, it was really the hard work that everybody from top to bottom put in. You know, like I said, doing match races, uh, Austin Coil, it's kind of when we had really got our blower dyno going. Uh, you know, we, we were up on the competition as far as uh, technology and, and we made more horsepower, we could manage it. Uh, having a second team, that was huge. And, you know, John, he was an innovator in all that. You know, needing another team for more data and working well with another team, and that was Tony Pedregon. Just uh, the overall team effort, and no matter what, if it ever happens again, that's what it's gonna take is, you know, a big team pulling together. The season started off, and I don't think we won the Winter Nationals, but Phoenix used to be a, a hotbed for force. He dominated at Phoenix, and um, I think we won Phoenix, and we just got on a roll and you expected to win every race and other teams couldn't believe we'd win a race on Sunday in dominant fashion and when all other teams like Top Fuel Champ or, or the Funny Car Champ for that event would be you know loading their stuff and partying we'd be back at the trailer service in our cars and they, people come over what are you guys doing well we're testing tomorrow and we used to have a saying here like Nitro on Monday is like sun on Monday. You got to have it, you know. And so we tested every Monday. And it didn't matter if we won or lost. And that was part of the momentum that kept us going. It kept the crew guys sharp on their game. It kept the crew chiefs um, with trickier conditions because the preparation on Mondays aren't as good. And um, so it gave us a lot of, of opportunity to learn different conditions conditions on the racetrack. We also, I think in 96, still did five or six uh, exhibition races or match races. And same thing, it's like other teams are were backing off of that stuff. And here we are, we'd race as much as we possibly could because that's all time for everybody on our teams to learn their craft. We got spoiled. We would go to every race just believing we would win. And when you didn't win, you were, you were upset, it's like, we should have won that race. But when you have the magic, you can't stop. You know, you take it for granted, you can win. But there's also when you lose, and it's such confusion, you know what I mean? Like, how could we lose? How can this car be this good in qualifying? Because sometimes the competition, they're just better that day. So you never want to get cocky. You never want to get to think that you can walk on water. Because it's a driver, it's a team, it's sponsor money, and great crew chiefs, like Austin and Bernie Federley that make it happen. But so unique that we even found ourselves winning so much, it's like, oh my God, we're exhausted, it's the end of the race, and we gotta go to another winner's circle to be honored. But then when you didn't win, it was like, oh my God, you missed that winner's circle. You missed Reinhardt up there yelling that you'd won, being up there with the other champions, and boy, you fight to get it back. But um, that was probably the hardest deal because, because there was years like like great race teams that we had magic and but you got you can't get caught up in that magic cuz you got to make it every week there was no cockiness or uh you know anything negative it was it was all just believing in each other and knowing we could do it uh we clinched the championship at Indy we won the big bud shootout 
We won the Indy race and clinched the championship all in one weekend. That's in September. The season doesn't end till November. That's how dominant we were. Oh my God, the fans were cheering we could win. And God bless them, we loved them. But you always wanted, you, you almost wanted to say at the ropes, calm down, we're not, we're not, we're not there yet. Let's don't write it. Let's, when, when they try to interview you, can you win? Well, we're gonna do our best. And, and you were points ahead, you knew you could. But you didn't wanna say it, you didn't wanna jinx yourself. The dominance of 96 showed you it's possible. It's possible to dominate. It's possible to win in any condition. I think it's instilled the pride upon us that you want to try and win every possible round, every possible event, every championship. And I think that just goes through John Force Racing. But that was a moment that I really felt that stepped not only John Force and his team up into the limelight, but put us up with the big boys. You know what I mean? That now we could say that we watched amongst them and I think that honor was really accepted by everybody that ever loved you know, the sport of NHRA drag racing. It was just, it was totally cool.